Hi there, Doug from Tau Stats, and we're approaching the launch of DTAO on the BitTensor network. And DTAO is a fundamentally different way of distributing emissions. And so there are a lot of questions out there. And so we're going to create a series of videos to help hopefully unravel some of the complexity that DTAO brings in and make it understandable so that everybody's on the same page. And so in this video, we're going to walk through the idea of buying and staking alpha tokens. Each subnet is going to have its own token, and you can buy that and stake alpha. And so that's going to lead to an introduction to liquidity pools. And we'll also talk a little bit about how uh, DTAO, how alpha is emitted into the different subnets. So let's just go right into it. Today, emission is all done via validators on the root subnet. And so the root subnet uh, the validators have stake, and then they divide the emissions up amongst all of the different subnets. That is still going to exist in the DTAO ecosystem, but we're going to talk more on the right side here, DTAO, where participants can buy alpha token. And then by buying that alpha token, that change these, changes the emission uh, to the different subnets based on how many people are buying the different alpha tokens. So alpha tokens. We use the word alpha to describe the tokens on all of the different subnets. It also describes the token on subnet one, alpha. Subnet two is beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, etc. When we run out of Greek, we go to Hebrew. When we run out of Hebrew, we go to Arabic. And as we grow more and more subnets, we will add more alphabets. So how do you buy alpha? And we use alpha generically to describe any subnet. So this could be buying alpha or buying beta or buying any of the other tokens. We need a liquidity pool and the liquidity pool is how we exchange tau for alpha. It's important to understand that the liquidity pool is the only way you can buy and buy alpha. You can't buy alpha and turn it into beta or any of the other ones. You have to go through tau to get around to beta. So a liquidity pool is sort of like the exchange at the airport, right? You've got euros and you need yen. So you go up and you hand them a bunch of euros and you come back with a bunch of yen. But it's a little bit different as well. So let's just go into that. One thing that's important to know is the amount of tau in the liquidity pool and the amount of alpha in the liquidity pool, when you multiply them together, has to equal a constant. We can then also look at the values of the alpha and tau in the liquidity pool to find out the price of the alpha in tau. Let's go through an example. So we've got a very simple uh, liquidity pool here. There's 100 tau in it. There's 100 alpha in it. So our k is 100 times 100, which is 10,000. The, the tau price is 1 because it's 100 over 100. Now let's say I want to buy 10 tau worth of alpha. You might look at this and say, well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The price is one. So if I get 10 tau, I'll come up with 10 alpha. But it doesn't quite work that way because liquidity pools add some constraints to the way the conversion is done. And that's going to lead to something called slippage, which we'll also go into in this video. What actually happens is this equation. And so let's walk through what's going on here and why we need this equation versus just, hey, the exchange rate is one. It should just be 10 tau. 10 tau to 10 alpha. So you put 10 tau into the liquidity pool. Now we're at 110 to 100. And so that can't stand because now we have 11,000. If we multiply alpha times tau, um, that does equal 10,000. So we know we need to expel some alpha to keep that ratio to be exactly uh, 10,000. And it turns out to, we need to expel 9.09 um, .09 alpha. And that's going to give us 90.9 times 110 is going to give us 10,000. This causes a change in the tau price to 0.8264. It also means we didn't get exactly as much alpha as we thought we would. And so that's what slippage is. And so a slippage is how much you thought you were going to get minus how much you actually got divided by how much you thought you were going to get. And that ends up showing that our slippage is 9.1%. And so the liquidity pool leads to this slippage um, because the change in price, the, because of the way the liquidity pool works with this constant, it affects the tau price when you're actually uh, making the purchase. 
or the exchange. Now, if another person comes in, we're at 120, and they're only going to get 7.57 alpha out, which leads to a slippage of about 6.6%. You can also see that I'm in the diagram sliding the liquidity pool a little more to the tau side, and that makes sense. There's more tau in the, li the liquidity pool than there is alpha. Okay, so now that you've got your alpha, you have to, when you tr buy alpha, you end up staking it to a hotkey, a validator hotkey to earn your uh, emissions, to earn your nominator awards. So in this case, we've staked our 9.09 .09 alpha to Tau Stats and Corsell. What else can we do with our alpha? We know we can't directly turn alpha into beta. We can't turn it into the, any of the other tokens. But what you can do is you could switch validator if you wanted to, right? We can switch it back and forth between Tau Stats and OpenTensor or any of the other validators that are active on the alpha subnet um, because you're still keeping your alpha inside the alpha um, staked pool of, of alpha. The other thing you can do with your alpha is you can sell it. And this goes through the exact same process in the other direction. If there's 100 tau and 100 alpha in the liquidity pool, it does the exact same math and you're gonna get 9.09 .09 tau out on the other side. Um, so the math is the same either way going through the liquidity pool. We have to make sure that that K stays constant. And so that's how we get our slippage going one way or the other because K must remain constant. Let's talk a little bit about emissions. There are a couple different ways that emissions are going to work in a DTAU world. If you sum up the tau prices across all of the subnets and the alpha is greater and the sum of those is all greater than one, we need to reduce the price of alpha. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to inject one alpha into the liquidity pool. And so we're going to go from 110 to 111. And interestingly, what that does is it changes the K. So K can change when an alpha is emitted into the liquidity pool. And so now you can see our K is 10,090.9. That's going to lower the tau price and bring everything down close so that sum is closer to one. One, one alpha is also emitted into the staked pool. And so that's going to be divided amongst the owner, the miners, the validators, and all the stakeholders. We'll have another video to walk through how that works because that's different from the way it is in the non detail world as well. The other option we can have is that the tau prices are less than one. And so in that case, we want to raise the, the, the value so that the, the alpha is closer, so that alpha to tau is closer to one. And so the way that works is one tau is going to be emitted and that gets distributed amongst all the subnets. Subnet one has an emission of about 5%. That means that 0.05 tau is going to be added to the liquidity pool. So we go from 90.9 to 90.95 tau, which is going to change the exchange rate between tau and alpha. And then the K also changes because we've now changed the amount of tau in the pool. We will also emit one alpha, again, to be divided amongst all the participants of the subnet. In this video, we've given you a brief overview of how liquidity pools are used in the DTAU world so that you can buy and sell alpha from your TAU, and also how emission affects the way the liquidity pools work, whether TAU is emitted, whether alpha is emitted into the pool, and then that one alpha is always emitted to all of the stakeholders. So. Come to Tau Stats to see all of the analytics from the BitTensor network. We're going to have all of this ready for the DTAU world once it launches. Um, and of course, watch this channel for updates because we want to stay on top of DTAU and all of the other happenings in the BitTensor ecosystem. Thanks for watching.